Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of an upper paleolithic Cro-Magnon individual from Europe, OSA1. Uh, this person lived in uh, 39,000 to 35,000 uh, years before the common era, really long time ago. Uh, this is the upper paleolithic and he is from Romania, you might not see this. In terms of his lineages, his mitochondrial lineage is N and his Y DNA is K2. K2 is an archaic lineage in terms of the paternal lineage, lineages. K2 is a lineage that a lot of modern um, modern lineages come from, such as, you know, R and Q. But it is not a lineage you will see in modern people. Modern people have uh, lineages that derive from K2. So, in terms of his um, GD match results, I'm going to show you his results with... Um, with GD match calculators. We're going to start with Eurogene's K13. What's interesting about this result is he's scoring 29% South Asian, 13% uh, East Asian, 10% Oceania, and he's kind of scoring all over the place, but mostly East Eurasian components. He's also scoring 11% Sub-Saharan African and 8% Northeast African. Uh, what's very interesting is that with my trade predictor, if we look at the ethnic calculator results, he is actually closest to North Africans. He's closest to Berbers, followed by Kenya Pastorius Neolithic, followed by another Kenya Pastorius Neolithic, followed by Tafaralt. Followed by that is Salhit individual from Upper Paleolithic Mongolia, and then it's other Middle Eastern people. So he seems to be quite Middle Eastern or North African with my trade predictor, although this was done on the basis of only 111 SNPs, so it may be not so precise. In terms of the haplogroup, the most precise haplogroup that my trade predictor was able to give to him is F. That's the most precise haplogroup that I could determine. Uh, but K does come from F, so here's why it didn't say K for him, right? Because let's look at the K panel. Uh, let's look at where the K is. K is right here. So he's got zero K variants out of zero total. And because of that, you can't really predict him to, ha to have K because there is simply not enough um, information in the file to predict him as K. When it comes to F, there is plenty of information that suggests he has F lineage and K does descend from F. So uh, I guess the most um, precise lineage that my trade predictor could, could come up with is F. All right, and let's move on to... Um, actually, let me show you some another calculator. Let's let's see some other calculator that might be interesting with GD match. Uh, I think MDLP Ancient Roots K10 might be interesting to see because it's more of a like an ancient up, up Paleolithic period calculator instead of a modern calculator. So let's run that. And meanwhile, let me show you where this is. Uh, this sample is located in Romania. So this person lived in this location in the. the uh, Balkan region of Romania, because you know how uh, Romania is kind of like in in the west, it's more of a mountainous Balkan type region, and in the east, it's more of a, I guess, steppe. So this person is from the mountains, and um, okay, okay, Admixture Studio is ready. All right, so this is what he scores with MDLP World Ancient Roots K10. And he is scoring a lot of really interesting components. He's scoring mostly East Eurasian, and that's a modern component. He's scoring then quite a lot of A and E, which is a pretty modern component once again compared to some of the other stuff. Uh, out of Africa, Basil is very interesting. This is definitely not a modern component. He's also scoring 10.6% human root, which is a component I've noticed a lot of Sub-Saharan Africans score. All right. And he is also scoring a lot of Archaic Man, which is very interesting. He's scoring 6.5% Archaic Man component. And this Archaic Man component is kind of like a uh, Neanderthal slash monkey slash anything that's not human. I noticed that various gorillas score like up to 90% Archaic Man. And Neanderthals score up to 80% Archaic Man. So him scoring 6.5% Archaic Man is very interesting because you, you will never see a... Um, you will never see like a modern normal sample scoring this much of this component. So this person, I think, might have some Neanderthal admixture based on him scoring this yeah, to this extent. And with the Oracle, he's getting more of this mixture of Puliyar plus San or Miende or Biaka. So like a mixture of South Asian and Sub-Saharan African, uh, spe specifically South African. Uh, very interesting. <laughs> now let's move on to his traits, what he looks like and what... Um, diseases he has. We're gonna start with Nashakot, so let's open that. And with Nashakot, he's 
closest phenotype seems to be this, which is kind of this very um, South Asian phenotype, very interesting. Followed by that, the second closest phenotype is this, which is another very South Asian phenotype. I did make little difference. There is a little difference between all these phenotypes. I think the bottom has a slightly lighter skin tone. I think that's the difference here. Uh, the second from the bottom has slightly lighter skin tone. And third phenotype is this, which is uh, Australian Aboriginal. Very interesting. So this person is quite South Eurasian in his appearance. It's, uh, it's pretty obvious. Even though he's from Romania, he's from Europe. Uh, but he is definitely not at all European in terms of what he looks like. Uh, when it comes to the models, there's actually an oracle here that I added, a phenotype oracle, which sort of models, uh, using two phenotypes, make a model that's closest to what you might look like. So the closest model is this phenotype plus Australoid. So it's basically Pamiri plus Australoid. Australoid, that's the closest mix to this individual. The second closest mix is... Alpinid plus this very, very dark South Indian. The third closest mix is Pamirid once again plus a darker version of Australoid. You can compare the picture on the very left to this picture right here. They have darker skin tone. Also, I think this picture in the middle has a wider nose. So yeah, I, I did make little differences. There's uh, different variations of common phenotypes that are that are included in my um, in my list of phenotypes to choose from, basically, for the Oracle. So there's some differences, like some of them have wider noses, some of them have curly hair, whereas the others have straight. Uh, but it's the same phenotype, but one has curly hair and one has straight, right? So that's that's the way I did it. I think it's quite interesting. The fourth closest phenotype is Alpinid plus this really dark version of Australoid. And the fifth closest phenotype is this uh, lighter version of Australoid with narrower nose plus this version of South Indian. But, I mean, it's quite um, it's quite a... Um, Indian looking guy. I mean, it's quite an Indian looking person. Overall, looking at these models and these mixtures, it looks like what an Indian might look like. Uh, a South Asian, maybe. Maybe a Bengali, maybe a Sri Lankan, but sort of within that Indian with vicinity of India. When it comes to his eye color likelihood distribution, it looks like he's definitely got darkest brown eyes. Brown eyes is also quite... There's, there's quite a big likelihood for brown eyes as well. Uh, there's also technically a 4.6% likelihood of hazel eyes, but I think that's because there's simply not a lot of data uh, in the file to make a good prediction. And if there was more data, it would be a lot more decisive. There would be basically zero for blue, zero for blue neighbor center, zero for green. Uh, him scoring a little bit of a likelihood for blue eyes says to us that there's maybe not so much relevant data in the file. Uh, for hair color distribution, looks like he definitely has black hair, although there is still a slight chance of dark brown and light and light brown and even dark blonde hair. But once again, this is most probably because there is simply not enough data in the file to make a more uh, concrete, more precise prediction. And for skin color likelihood distribution, looks like he's got dark brown, light brown, or olive skin. Uh, once again, there is a little bit of a likelihood for white skin and even palest skin, but that's because there is simply not enough relevant data in the file to make a good guess based on. And for hair texture, once again, it's kind of all over the place, but that's, that's because there is uh, the same problem of not enough data. But most likely, based on the data we do have, most likely he's got kinky or curly hair. That's what that's most likely the, uh, the hair texture that he's got. Although he could have straight hair too. Uh, we don't know. There is, as I've said, uh, you would need more data to be able to determine more precisely. For coloring related variants, it looks like he's not, he doesn't have any genotypes that are relevant to coloring in HERC2 region, which is very, very unfortunate, besides this one genotype. And this one genotype is actually very revealing. Him not having any light color variants here, uh, is, this is the one thing that really reveals to us that he does indeed have dark color of eyes and hair, uh, because this is very predictive of blue eye haplotype 1, and it also, it also by itself makes a big impact on the coloring. So uh, even though he's not genotyped for Literally anything here, because of this one genotype, we already know that he's probably darker in color. And that's what's so cool about my tool, because my tool allows you to impute. If there is, um, if there is not much data in the file, with my tool, you can actually do imputation and still get a sensible result that matches reality. Now, if this wasn't found in the file, if, if this said 999, that would be much worse, because then you couldn't make a guess at all. 
looks like he's not gene attacked for anything in SLC 24A5 region. That's relevant to skin color. Once again, really unfortunate. He's got this genotype, which is really important once again, because every if you have if you don't have much genotypes, then every genotype is more important. Uh, because every genotype can be used to reveal everything around its neighbors, about its neighbors. So for example, him not having any light color variants here, because of that, we can assume that he probably doesn't have any light color variants here or here as well. So you see, if if you don't have much data, then every Every bit of data becomes more valuable. Um, he's got two light color variants in this variation of SLC 24A4, which is very interesting. And he's got zero light, light color variants in this variation of tier 1. Once again, interesting. That contributes to darker pigmentation. And zero light color variants in this variation of tier. Once again, this contributes to darker pigmentation. And he does not have any light color variants in any of the MC1R variations. All right, so no predisposition to being ginger. All right, this was very interesting. Now let's. Uh, examine his polygenic risk scores and diseases. So we're going to start with the polygenic risk scores. And it looks like he's got an average score for schizophrenia. Uh, it looks like he, nothing relevant was found for type 2 diabetes, which is unfortunate. He's got a slightly below average score for Alzheimer's. Nothing relevant was found for multiple sclerosis, which is once again unfortunate. Two risk variants for breast cancer out of two, which is once again unfortunate. Uh, Normally you would see normally you would see out of 24 out of 30, but in this case it's a small file, so here it's out of two. Zero risk variance for testicular cancer out of four. All right, once again, normally you'd see out of 30 or out of 24. In this case, it's out of four because not a very high quality file. Zero risk variance for celiac disease out of zero. Nothing relevant for celiac disease was found. Nothing relevant was found also for GSS. And zero risk variance for Crohn's out of six, which is really good. Nothing relevant was found for Reifenstein's and zero for Parkinson's out of two. So it looks like there is pretty much nothing to worry about in this whole genome. Uh, let's see what his um, monogenic traits are. So it looks like he's got a gene in this variation of Profenacin Pro. So a gene in Profenacin Pro, one derived no-go learner variant. Somebody asked me to make a video about no-go learning and explain it a little bit. I don't know if I should because I already have a video on that topic, but... But then again, maybe I should just make another video, because why not? Because I got to make a video every day, and I have plenty more days left to make videos on other stuff. So maybe there will be a video on no-go learner learning. I don't know. Uh, basically, this means that he's got an intermediate number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain and intermediate likelihood of schizophrenia. Very interesting that he's got the A allele here, because the A allele here is very European. Uh, however, he's got this, this genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is typically linked with Profenitin Pro. Uh, the A allele in this variation is typically linked with the G allele in Profenitin Pro. So here he's got more dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and higher risk of schizophrenia. And this is not a European genotype. Uh, what's interesting, and I just noticed this, is that he's got AA in TAC1. This is very surprising. And AA in TAC1, in TAC1 is kind of, uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because it's a great decrease in the number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and a great increase in the likelihood of stuff like alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, and various other illnesses. And this is not a typical human genotype by any stretch. However, pretty much every Neanderthal, monkey, uh, any non-human basically has AA in TAC1, which is very interesting. Maybe it is something that humans, maybe for humans, the G allele and the slightly increased number of dopamine receptors in the brain is quite important. Maybe it is it does something for us that helps us survive and helps us as a species to... Uh, to adapt and become the uh, sort of the top of the food chain, you know? So I wonder what it is about the G allele in TAC1 or the A2 allele uh, that became so attractive to humans that we ended up basically all having it. But in this, in this case, he actually doesn't have any G alleles. He's got two A alleles. So he's got basically like a 40% decrease in the number of, number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. Very interesting. Uh, I think Malta 1 also had the same genotype. The Malta boy from Siberia also had AA here. And he's got CC in this variation of HT, HTR2A, which, in, which uh, corresponds with robustly increased risk of suicidal behavior and depression and increased risk of sexual dysfunction when taking SSRI depressants, antidepressants. All right. For results for mental health, it looks like he's got this genotype, which leads to a increased risk of autism and worse cell adhesion in neurons. For DDC gene panel, it looks like nothing relevant was found. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Very interesting. For OXTR and the empathy gene, it looks like he's got two variants for higher levels of empathy in this variation of OXTR. Most likely not East Asian, so he's not a sociopath. That's really good to see. For diabetes, nothing relevant was found. All right. 
for him, Akromatosas, it looks like he has got GG in C282 tier, which means he's not a carrier for the C282Y Hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. Keep in mind, there's two other mutations for Hemochromatosis, so this is not a definitive answer that he does not have Hemochromatosis because there's two more. <laughs> Uh, for Alzheimer's, it looks like he's got genotypes that increase the risk of Alzheimer's. Really good to see. For multiple sclerosis, nothing relevant was found. For cardiovascular disease, we're going to skip that. For myopia, we're going to skip that. For miscellaneous section, all right, let's talk about this. Uh, so he's got TT in this variation, which leads to impaired muscle performance, and likely he is an endurance athlete. And he also does not have East Asian EDAR. He's got AA genotype in this variation of EDAR. Likely no shovel-shaped ancestors and not East Asian in ancestry. So he is not and East Asian in his appearance or ancestry, which is very interesting because he's quite East Eurasian. But he, I guess East Eurasian and East Asian is not the same thing um, because like people in Australia mostly have AA hair as well. People, people in South India mostly have AA hair as well. Uh, for drug response, he looks like he's got this genotype, which leads to slightly increased odds of weight gain if taken Zyprexa. And for albinism, it looks like he's not a carrier of a cutaneous albinism type 2 mutation. Familiar Mediterranean fever and MCHFR looks like nothing relevant was found. Cancer panel looks like there is only one gene type found. Let's not really talk about it. There's nothing interesting here. Leukemia, nothing relevant was found. For rare diseases panel, let's see. He's got this genotype, which leads to a 5.2 times increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis and 1.5 times increased of systemic sclerosis. Very interesting genotype. I think I have the same genotype here as well. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't matter all that much because uh, these are very rare illnesses. So having like a 5.2 times increased risk of illness that occurs in 0.1% of people, you still have like a 0.5% chance of getting it. So it's it's not very, it's not a very big deal, you know. Um, celiac disease, we're going to skip. Allergies panel, it looks like he's got three, three times higher risk for developing a peanut allergy. Very interesting. Androgen receptor gene, nothing relevant was found. Crohn's disease, nothing relevant was found. Canavan syndrome, it looks like zero risk right ends here and not much is found. Uh, HIV and AIDS panel, nothing relevant was found. For muscular dystrophy myopathy, it looks like he's got nothing was found. All right. There's pretty much nothing to talk about here. For color blindness, once again, nothing was found. It's a very it's a very poor quality file. You might have figured that out by now. And FTO gene panel, it looks like he's got this genotype, which is to much higher BMI and moderate increase in the risk of obesity. So he's a little bit predisposed to being overweight. And he's got this genotype, actually, that lowers the risk of obesity and insulin sensitivity, which is very interesting. And now let's me, let me zoom in so that I can show you that. Um, for syncope, it looks like nothing relevant was found. All right. And for bio trades panel, it looks like he's got this genotype, which leads to higher predisposition to anger. And you can't see it. That's so unfortunate. Let me zoom in. Hold on. And he's got CC. <coughs> and he's got CC in this variation, which leads to longer telomere length and 7.2 years longer lifespan than individuals with the GG genotype. So he's got longer telomeres and longer lifespan, which is very interesting. Um, I, I When I found this uh, variation, I was like, whoa, I got to add this to my trade predictor. This is so important. And I think it was a good call to add it. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also you can download this individual's raw data file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.